Now that the rain has cleared and the spray has settled on iRacing's first ever wet special event with this year's Sebring 12 hour, I want to weigh in with my thoughts on rain in iRacing. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, they couldn't see anything. Oh, 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 oh now, 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 stay out of the wall, stay out of the wall. On your left. Blue flag. I might do like... Oh, he, he done... Oh, no, no! Stay out of the wall, stay out of the wall. Holy crap! Let's go! Vamos, vamos! Don't hit the wall! Jesus Christ! Now, before we go any further, I do just want to point out that there were a lot of initial impression videos that came out leading up to and after the release of Rain, and I almost made one myself, but I thought that my opinion needed a little bit more time and experience with Rain and iRacing before I shared it. And you can go and find those videos from people like Tony Kanaan, Casey Kerwin, Daniel Morad, etc., who all agree that racing in the rain on iRacing is a very realistic experience, particularly Tony Kanon and Daniel Morad have a ton of experience in real life in the wet, and they've confirmed that iRacing have done a fantastic job. And this is the expectation that I've always had from iRacing when they were going to implement rain. I myself have some experience racing in the rain in hobby series like the 24 Hours of Lemons and Lucky Dog. I've also been lucky enough to be in an F4 car on a wet track at Road Atlanta as a part of a Skip Barber racing school. So I know from real life experience how cars feel on a wet track, and I agree with those guys. The implementation is very realistic, and it's awesome to see from iRacing. They really had no choice but to make a realistic system, which is why it took so long for them to implement it. That said, I'm curious if we should have really been asking for them to implement rain in general, knowing that it was going to be a realistic experience. And I'll get into why I question our motives there in a second, but let's first talk about what iRacing has already done to improve the experience of racing in the rain on iRacing. They've improved the spray from initial release. On initial release, the spray was way too dense. Even if you got right up to the bumper of the car ahead of you, you still couldn't see them. And the same went for the rain lights and the brake lights. You could never see that through the spray and they've improved both of those things. So now you start to get the silhouette of the car ahead of you as you get closer in the spray. You can see their brake lights and the rain lights. And I do think there's some improvements still to be made with the brake lights and rain lights, but it's difficult to update lighting systems in a game. It's a simulation without larger changes. So I understand that they've made incremental improvements there and I expect them to make even more improvements. The other thing that was really painful is that we were getting red flag conditions during rain in iRacing on initial release. And what that means is that we were getting conditions in the sim that would have caused a race to be shut down in real life until the conditions improved. And iRacing have improved that by saying, hey, we're no longer gonna give you these intense conditions. We're gonna make sure that the conditions you get on track stay within the realm of possible racing in real life. So kudos again to iRacing for being so responsive to community feedback. That said, community feedback is the reason why we got rain in iRacing in general, and I question whether or not we should have been begging for it so much. And the reason is, just look at what it takes in real life from professional racing drivers to race in the rain, and you'll see that a lot of mistakes happen once rain starts to fall and a track starts to get wet. It's the most difficult situation in all of racing, and we are amateurs. Most of the drivers in iRacing are amateurs. Professional drivers struggle in these conditions, and we as amateurs are now taking these conditions on. And while it's amazing to experience something that professional drivers are experiencing in real life, it also makes our experience potentially less fun. And I kind of said the bad G word earlier in calling iRacing a game because it is a simulation, but it's a simulation game. And one of the tenets of a game is making sure that it's fun. And racing in the rain in real life can be very fun. It's challenging and punishing, but coming out on top and defeating those conditions can feel really fulfilling. And I think a lot of people are feeling that way in iRacing. But on the flip side, there are plenty of people who can only race casually and are being scared off by these conditions. And one of the things that's missing when you're in a simulation as opposed to real life is the feeling of the car underneath you. And that's one of the things that make it so enjoyable in real life. You're feeling the car do things that it wouldn't normally do, and you're reacting to that. You're feeling the sensations of the car moving around on puddles, and the only way that we have to access that is through the wheel or if you have a motion sim, but most people do not have 
motion sims. And so by missing out on those motion aspects without a motion rig, without having a car moving underneath you, we are missing a large element of the fun of racing in the rain. Another way we can see how people's fun or enjoyment within the rain has shifted is with their car choices. And the best way to highlight this is looking at the car choices people made during the 24 hours of Daytona versus the car choices people made during the 12 hours of Sebring. And we saw a lot of people migrate from that GTP class down to the LMP2 or GT3 class because the GTP is so difficult to drive in the rain. And there is a debate on whether or not that difficulty is realistic, but at least on paper, it makes sense to me that the GTP is more difficult in the rain. It's the more powerful car, it has more weight. So when you're trying to control that power or when you're heading into a braking zone, you're carrying more speed, you're dealing with more wheel slip. It has stronger brakes, so as you get on the brakes, it's easier to lock up. It's a heavier car, so when you actually get on those brakes and try to slow it down, it becomes more difficult. And because there's more weight in the car, when you're trying to turn it or weight shift it, it becomes more difficult to get the car to do what you want to do. And because there are so many difficulties in the GTP car, we saw a lot of people migrate down to the LMP2 or the GT3, which are much more enjoyable and fun to drive in the wet. And by more evidence, we can actually see the participation numbers between the Daytona 24 this year and the Sebring 12 hour this year. And when we break down the signups per car between the Daytona 24 this year and the Sebring 12 this year, we can see people's preference shift from the GTP, which had over double the participation at Daytona, to the LMP2 and even the GT3, whose numbers went up slightly because those cars are more fun and easier to drive in the wet. So this isn't just something that is anecdotal. iRacers themselves have already shown us that they're going to migrate to the experience that's going to be more fun. And sometimes that means choosing the less challenging experience. Because remember, we're still there to have fun. And part of having fun is staying alive and being able to race on track. It's part of the reason why a lot of us get so heated when we get into incidents and get so frustrated is because we feel like we didn't get to fulfill the full experience that we were looking for with that race. And so if you're leaving races because you've crashed because of a small mistake that you would survive in dry conditions, but it killed you in wet conditions, and you don't have time to practice to avoid those smaller mistakes or learn how to work with them in the rain, you're probably just going to avoid the situations that give you a less fulfilling and fun experience by stepping away from rain or going into a car that is much easier to control in the rain. So now when we take that and compare it to racing in the wet versus racing on a dry track between two series, I think it's very likely that the more casual eye racers or the people who have less time to prepare are going to shift towards racing in those series where rain is not present. And there may already be evidence to support this claim when we look at Super Formula Light's participation over the first three weeks of this season, where we're finally getting rain this week at Road Atlanta in the Open Setup Series. Looking at the data from the first two weeks, the Fixed Series is always getting more participation than the Open Series, but if we look at this week in particular and project out the numbers for the remaining days in the week, we can actually see about a 10% drop-off in participants in the open series. And I think that is likely due to the rain situation, especially when you compare these numbers to Hockenheim, where the participation in fixed is very similar. We are seeing about an eight or 900 driver drop off in participation in the open series. And I think that's likely due to rain. We've already seen a trend in iRacing for a long time, where when a series goes to a track that's popular like Spa or Monza, participation will spike and a lot of people will show up for that week and participation will dip in popular series when they go to a track people don't know or are less familiar with. And I think we're going to see something similar with rain, where when it's raining, participation in popular series will drop as compared to weeks where there is dry weather. And we've already had people complaining when track conditions are very hot and grip is low about how difficult tracks are to drive on. And I suspect that's just going to continue in the same direction when we see rain. We've had a saying for a long time in iRacing that there are no bad tracks, only bad drivers, which speaks to the trend of drivers only gravitating towards tracks they know. But now we have a new saying, there are no bad track conditions, only bad drivers.
I think to summarize my feelings on Rain, it definitely adds to the overall experience and offering from iRacing from a simulation perspective and from the perspective of giving us the life of a racing driver when racing other people, now adding conditions that racing drivers are dealing with. On the flip side, I do think it makes it a little bit less enjoyable and more difficult for the casual racer to jump in and enjoy those series that they like when they are wet series because it takes more time, effort, and concentration to survive the wet and have a good time in it. And so I think for those casual drivers who are getting on in limited time without a lot of practice, they're probably going to avoid rain. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on rain. I'd love to hear if you're enjoying it, why or why not, and what you think you'd like to see from iRacing to improve the rain. Because to be honest, I don't have any critiques of it at this point. I think it needs to be as realistic as it is now. But I do think maybe if it was just a little bit less realistic and a little bit less punishing, it would be more fun. So I don't really know how to balance those things when we're talking about a simulator where we're looking for realism. But anyway, Leave your feelings down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you soon. Maybe on a wet track, maybe on a dry track. I don't know, but good luck staying out of the wall when you lock up those tires on the GTP. Cause I tell you, it is difficult. I think we're gonna stay away from the racing line here and try to just find like a puddleless braking zone. This is perfect. Oh no, we locked it up again. F oh yeah, no, we're gonna have to slow down. We have to slow down. Oh, f don't hit the wall. Jesus Christ.